Uh, episode 502, Bell U of the Week. What are we going to play ourselves in with here? Let's have a look through some of the old ones. Well, Eddie's been a bit bitter this week, so we'll celebrate with him. So in 10 days' time, touch wood, DAZN have the entire roster of middleweight world champions. So people like Charlo, you ain't, you have no fights for you. If you want to be a world middleweight champion, you better join DAZN ASAP. <laughs> there you have it. Are you are you saying that this statement is untrue? How's that? Where's that working out for him, Rob? I missed the clip. I wasn't on the mute. What was the <laughs> which one was it? If you don't get on, the whole middleweight roster needs to get on the zone. Ah, there's right? no fights for you, sir. There's no fucking fights for you. Get it. A... Yeah. He's having a stinker anyway, isn't he? I'm sure we're going to get to it. He's having a fucking shocker. If, if you want to fight uh, Jaime Munguia or Demetrius Andre, uh, you know where you got to go. Munguia turned down another fight, didn't he, this week? Was it Alan Canoe? <laughs> yep. He, yeah, he turned down <laughs> Alan Hanala. He fights who he wants. He fights who he wants. Oh, he doesn't want to fight Hamanula anyway. Right, here we are. Uh, Tyson Fury, according to IFL TV, who says they haven't got the big interviews anymore. Uh, Tyson Fury discusses asking for his favourite meal in a posh restaurant in New York. I was in a big fancy restaurant in New York, says Tyson. Everyone was having lobster and that sort of thing. So I said, I'll tell you what I'll have. Fish fingers with chips and beans. Uh, the, all the big content. <laughs> Fuck that. We want to know what happened in the Scrabble Championship. Fuck the fucking fish fingers. Oh dear, good old Tyson. Uh, Tony Bellew, he's back in action as well, his own boxing. What would it take to get Tony Bellew back in the ring? Will he make a, a comeback? Well, apparently there was a lot of comments, unfortunately, saying they didn't want to see Tony back in the ring, so he piped up. The amount of trolls Twitter has is just mad. Why don't people put their actual picture and real name to their profiles? Sad, crazy world we live in, says Tony. <laughs> so, <laughs> he would also like your address too. Yeah, he would. He'll dox you. Very emotional, he's isn't he, Tony? All right. Would you like to see him back in the ring, Rob? Yeah, versus Jake Paul. Let's make it happen. The zone. This time it's personal, mates. There's plenty of fights on the zone. Oh, no, this is on Sky Sports Boxer, actually, on 17th of December, Matty. Chris Billum smith versus... Now, this is one for Scrabble Championship. Maybe Isaac Lowe can get his tongue around this one. What's, the, what's that? I think he wrote what's, it. What's that opponent's name? I, I think it's Hohaj. <laughs> it's not Alim Hanalo, is it? It's, I think I it's think, a uh, or Cho -cho one I, of the two. I think Isaac Lowe wrote that and his real name is Shocknessy. <laughs> <laughs> bitter bastard, says Ray. Bitter bastards, absolutely. <laughs> uh, against uh, Rocky Felding is a pretty good fight, actually, there. Yeah, no, that is a good fight, actually. Yeah, Looking forward to that one. And yeah, Colin Dubois as well. Yeah. I think I need a first. Does Is that a monodym, Steve, or does he have a first name? Who are we on about here? Hoha or yeah, I don't know. My, yeah. I th apparently, his first name was difficult to pronounce, so they left it off the poster. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> oh dear, Ozzy's not with us unfortunately, but we've got this one. We got sent this in this week in his honour. <laughs> Ozzy's out with him tonight. That's right. He's down in he's down in Charlie. Any big John Fisher? Oh, he's out in Preston, isn't he? He's here tonight. Yeah, him and Oz have gone for a few pints tonight to watch the England game. They went for a Chinese first. And then they went out for a few laggers to watch the England game. And then Ozzy had paid 30 quid to get uh, Big John to sing three lines on a shirt uh, for a cameo. And then Big John took the shirt off. And that's the end of the cameo there. He's actually <laughs> wishing Oz uh, good luck. On it. And then they've gone out together on the piss. So that should be a good report back in from Oz next week. All right. Bosh indeed. Oh, bloody John Fisher. Look, looks like the guy from Mike and Molly got alopecia. That's John Fisher, man. Chinese order extraordinaire, Matty. Yeah, exactly. That's why he's doing the white wine. It's, you know, chicken or fish, as we all learned the other week. And like Andy, who doesn't know how to drink wine, the heathen that he is. He's on the white wine for health reasons. You know, he's, he's <laughs> trying to keep it healthy, Matty. What, instead of doing rum and coke? Yeah, I think so, indeed. Here, talking of keeping it healthy, Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield have partnered to release holy ears, ear-shaped edibles. Tyson said, if I was on cannabis, I wouldn't have bit his ear. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fair, I think. <laughs> yeah, Matty, we're gonna have to get you on them for the Patreon man exclusive. See how it goes. So the problem is, is that they can't make them in Colorado because Colorado has a law on the books where the, uh, they can't make 
edibles that are shaped like things. They can only be like squares and shit like that because they think that'll keep kids from eating them. I don't know. Oh, right. There we go. Got the old candy sticks of yesteryear. Uh, we mentioned this fellow before, Dennis de Bomb. We're not uh, brew on him. He had a bit of a stinker. Uh, talking of stinkers, the old check here for Rougarou. I deposited my fight check Monday while I was in LA. Today, the bank emailed me saying the check bounced because of insufficient funds. Somebody better find out what's going on before I click the fuck out. Uh, <laughs> not sure if his cash, if his cash came in or not, Matthew. It did. He's, uh, he's it did. It ended up. He ultimately ended up getting it and everything like that. But it wasn't a good look for Marv Nation. You know, I mean, and uh, you don't want to ruin the name of Marv. I mean, there's been so many good Marvs throughout history. So you know, yeah. keep, you know, for Marv's everywhere. Marv, uh, you know, pay your bills. Marvin Gay, uh, Marv at home alone, as discussed on this pod last week. In fact. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, we're we're uh, big in the Marv business. Absolutely. Dropping two hours on an England football night. Only three of us on, but we're fighting on through. Boxing on BT Sport. Uh, we've got uh, Gordon Ramsay, chef extraordinaire. He's made his way over to the States there. He says, fights like this only come around every 20 years. Enjoy it. What? Apart from the fact that they fought each other fucking three times in 10 years. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> shit out of me. Yeah, See if he's staring at me in that kitchen, by the way. What's wrong with them people who go on the show like that fucking easy shout out? Oh, you did you fucking didn't do the fucking mashed potatoes right. Why don't you fucking shut the fuck up, fool? Shouting at me like that, yeah, fucking dickhead. <laughs> you know, like between Deontay Wilder and Derek Chisora, that's basically one out of every six fights that Tyson Fury has had. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you're not going to square up to Gordon Ramsay, though, are you? Here's Errol Spence uh, putting in the hard yards. He makes a good point here, Rob. What's going on with the Conor Ben situation? The old out of sight, out of mind tactic? <laughs> well, what you got to understand, Errol, and you, you of all people should understand this, <laughs> Conor Ben is a clean athlete and a great guy, and he has had his beard transplanted onto his face. Right? He's a great guy. He's an ambassador for the sport. He goes and trains when he's in heated seats. He couldn't possibly be a drug chief because he's English, the son of Nigel Bain, and had a big fight coming up. So what's the, what's your fucking problem? The truth. There's the truth for you. There we are. They never thought of putting Harlem Eubank in against Harley Ben as a replacement, but Conor Ben is out of sight and out of mind at the moment. Uh, this guy is well in the headlines anyway. Uh, Amir Khan having to go at Hamza Shiraz. Shiraz's team put out a little a statement response to them as well. Weren't happy about that. Here's one for you, boys. At home, <laughs> someone put... mm, boo boo. <laughs> I'm not sure who made this, but someone put it in the WhatsApp group earlier. Maybe someone in the chat can let us know. But that's the gad. <laughs> things in Buster Japan. <laughs> <laughs> An uncanny resemblance. Actually, I'm sure. I'm sure. Maybe you haven't got the clip, Steve. Have you got the Dillian White one coming up for him? Uh, no. No, no, I haven't. Oh, fuck's sake, you must have seen it, man. It was an IFL interview when he's going through and, and fucking White is going through the, uh, I think it's either for the weigh-in or on the day of the fight. He's wearing like a big camouflage jacket or something. And Gad is giving his his fucking obligatory IFL interview interview with the Coogan. And Dillian White rocks up in the background and Gad bizarrely gets his hand, man, and he starts patting his hand and he's like, uh, yeah, how are you feeling, big man? How are you feeling, big man? And then he goes to him, tell me, yeah. Uh, have you had a shower? And White just looks at him like with his face, like baby thing. He's like, what the fuck? And he just ignores him and walks on. And Coogan was like, sorry, God, did you just ask him if he had a shower? He's like, yes, because fighters of a different generation, sometimes they didn't bathe for a week because they wanted to keep the scent on them. So I just wanted to ask him that. And then everyone's obviously caning him online. So he's come out and tried to do a damage control in another IFL interview. And he's like, I thought I would ask a different question on the night to try and provoke a different response, but I really, the question went and sounded something different. I'm just wondering, is this like is going to be his approach now for all his interviews? <laughs> Ebony, tell us, Ebony, do you like to shower? Well, honestly, I like a bath a lot. Gareth, I like a bath instead of a shower because guys buy my bath water uh, on Twitter <laughs> with my socks. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your Australian accent's very good out there, Rob. I, it's, it's very good. I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's, it's strong. It's strong. He's a man of many talents. That's why he's here on a Sunday evening with us, wasting his life. Um, like... <laughs> I, 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 I'm kind of curious if you could procure what Katie Taylor would sound like if she were Australian, but I'm not going to put you on the spot. You you work on that and get back to shut, it. Shut your mouth, you drongo. Well, fuck. <laughs> <Good day. laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Right, final one I've got here. Because I'm not on Twitter. I ain't got no more. Uh, Bob Arum, Eddie Hearn is a fucking joke. <laughs> the week's got to be shit until the belly club's back. <laughs> and if you want to find him, fuck off. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Eddie Hearn is a fucking joke. He shit all the zone's money away. Bob Arum, according to this, Matty. And then someone in the comments said, just further confirms further that Eddie is making an impact. And they are all worried. Uh, judging by that photo, Bob Arum doesn't seem worried about it too much, to be honest. Uh, it appears that uh, the old man gives zero fucks. I think he's had a couple of edibles, maybe smoked a duber, and uh, what... Bob's just uh, Bob's just chilling. Eddie, in fairness to him, uh, tried to re- respond to that and say, "What you've got to understand is Bob, Bob's on edibles the whole time when he's off his fucking head." <laughs> he actually said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a direct quote. That's awesome. <laughs> oh dear, there we are. Well, that's all the ones that I've got for the time being. I think it was a pretty strong week, considering. Uh, Matthew, any nominations for you? Episode 502. Oh, man. I, I wish you had uh, cut that uh, that uh, Tyson Fury quote that I sent, but I let me pull it up in the Messenger's, his, uh, his, his quote that he had. Uh, bear with me. Go to Rob real quick, and then I'll have it for you. Go to uh, <laughs> this Clouds Gaming, Rob. Andrew, Andrew Johnson with the shitty blue fleece. <laughs> Oh, fucking um, shout out to Dominic McNamara as well, by the way, who sent me a, a fucking a quality screenshot, I should have sent it to you, of uh, our main man from Rich Planet commentating on the Josh Kelly fight straight out of the fucking starship from Rich Planet, man. He's even dressing like Richard Lee Hall now. He's fucking doing this to wind me up, Crawley's. Stop it now. It's fucking, we've had our fun with it. Um, so that was pretty good. Like, um, what else? There was a well, couple actually, fucking... Rob, it's funny you should mention Don McNamara because we hadn't heard from him for ages. He appeared in the chat again tonight. The Limerick assassin is back with a with a question as well. That'd be yeah, a great rap name. Him. The Limerick assassin. That'd be a great rap name. I think that's probably taken. <laughs> I've been to Limerick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have another one there, Matty? Did you say sorry? Yeah, yeah. So Tyson Fury said, uh, you know how I used to masturbate seven times a day to give me power? This time I'm celibate. I'm trying something out. I'm going in there with a loaded gun. I'm going to be uh, testosterone out of my mind completely. Seven weeks worth. Um, yeah, so that's that's from Tyson Fury. Um, and I kind of think uh, once he kind of let that out, did you ever watch Hancock with Will Smith? Uh, no, I haven't seen that. Well, that's a shame because there's a really good uh, fucking anecdote from that. But uh, thanks for being so uh, unaware of pop culture that my references fall flat, Steve. Uh, but I'm not on Twitter anymore. I haven't got a clue what's going on out there. The world could be burning for all yeah. I know, Matty, and I haven't got a freaking clue. Hancock came out like 20 years ago. Oh, well, okay. Sorry. Yeah, Too you shy. should be. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, uh, yeah. Well, Ben Russell says Josh Kelly and Troy Williamson in an evidence-based uh, investigation. Uh, Ronnie Hussein's there, by the way. The Hussein clone posse, better late than never. Good to have you as always, Ronald. Good to have you with us. Okay, then, so let's have a quick look over what we have had already, and then we'll make our picks. Did I have a video this week to play? Oh, no, I didn't, actually. That's okay. Uh, so we had Tyson Fury talking about his dinner. We had uh, Tony Bell, you making a comeback. We had Billum Smith against the Human Password. We had uh, old Johnny Fisher Sr. We had the Edibles, the Holy Ears. We had this referee, uh, Regis Progray, getting paid eventually. Gordon Ramsay, uh, talking shite. Errol Spence, doing a bit of digging. Uh, we've got Amir Khan going in on Hamza Shiraz. We have old Gad <laughs> Selector. And we have uh, Bob Arum and Eddie Hearn. The rift goes on, plus whatever the boys have thrown in. Uh, what have you got this week, Matty? Uh, you know, I, I love that, uh, that fucking Gad potato head thing going on there, but... That fucking referee, Steve. I've seen some fucking performances, but that was pathetic. Uh, yeah, fucking Dennis DeBone. Yeah, he deboned that fucking fighter real good. Um, and uh, yeah, fuck him for not letting the fighters fight. Dennis DeBone for Matty then. It's a toss-up for me, Rob, to be honest with you. There's a couple that I've liked this week, including Holyfield and Tyson and the Edibles and the Gad and, and Bo Selector. Uh, what are you going for, Rob? Um, I like Howard Foster's performance a lot. It was a, it was a lot like um, Snatch with Brick Talk and the fucking his guys going down in the first, and they just fucking ring the bell early and then stop the fight. Give me the fucking shooter! Oh, you get that reference, you piece of shit! <laughs> <laughs> Cut, 
you fucking Jacobs off. Uh, so fucking, yeah, that was good. And then Eddie with the fucking response about Bob saying that he's on edibles, trying to discredit what he's saying about pissing all the money away from the zone. Um, just fucking fury and Tesora itself. Like the whole thing was the shenanigans, like um, the Duvois thing. And then what else was there? Oh, Baumgartner and Mayer had a, a, a fun exchange at the fights, the Chocolatito fight. Um, Michaela Mayer uh, sent Baumgartner a bunch of flowers and a card saying, uh, congratulations on the gift decision. And then uh, Alicia Baumgartner countered while she was in the audience and went up and hand delivered her a card that said, don't be a salty bitch. You know, <laughs> and then wrote on the inside of it, you know, I won the fight. So uh, all respect to the Queen Baumgartner for that fucking excellent counter. Um, and, they have uh, to fight again, man. They're building it well. Like, and yeah, that, that's good shit. Yeah, yeah, it was brilliant. Like, and um, well, because Baumgartner did it, this is fucking way better. Um, and fucking it has to be Paris Fury, man, with the fucking Scrabble. <laughs> the Scrabble, Isaac, Isaac Lowe won the Scrabble Championship to become Tyson Fury's head coach. Trying to fucking wind up there. What the fucking hell? Who was in that? Um, so yeah, that was brilliant from Paris Fury. I think she has to get it. Yeah, we'll go for Paris Fury as well. I quite like that one. Congratulations, Paris. You are the Belly of the Week winner for episode 502. 